Hey what's up you guys, yes I am back here again but it's with another what you're watching and it is of February's edition. Now in this I will be going through new films and old films that I've watched this month and I'll give you like a few snippets of why I watched them and what I thought about them. I won't be doing the films that I've put like a single review up, these are just films that are a little uh, I thought I would do but also it just gives you guys some recommendations as well as to what kind of films I like and also what kind of films you may want to start watching and need some more recommendations on so if you do watch any of these films please let me know what you thought of them there isn't much today there are only like three films but two of them are in the cinema but I thought I'd just put them in because I have not watched any films in February because I've just been doing essays. Anyway, let's get on with the video. So the first film that I watched was Blade Runner, The Final Cut, directed by Ridley Scott, who did films like Alien. Um, the actor in it, actors, actors in it was Harrison Ford at his prime. Um, it's beautiful prime time, I love him. Mwah. Um, Seen Young and Rudger Hauer. Sorry if I butchered that name. I always seem to watch films with people's names that I can't pronounce. Anyway, I watched this film because of films like Ex Machina and Her that I watched in January's edition and I kind of was like, this is the film. Like, all of the film nerds love this film. There's so many cuts of this film so... Mm. but everyone loves this film so I was like well you've got to watch it haven't you Megan and also because Blade Runner 2 2049 is coming out and if you know me I love a bit of Ryan Gosling and I love a bit of Harrison Ford so I should really watch the original before I watch the new one so that's what I've done and I didn't really like Blade Runner I didn't hate the film, it wasn't like a hate-worthy film, I just didn't really enjoy the film as much as I thought I would. I think it's because it had so much hype around it, there's so many people telling me to go watch it that I was like, okay, I'll go watch it, I'll go watch it, it must be good, it must be good. And then I was probably a little bit let down more because of how much hype my friends generated it from it. But also I think because there's so many cuts, you've got like the Harrison Ford voiceover, you've got the original cut, you've got this cut, the final cut that I watched, you've got probably some more, I don't know how many cuts there is, I just know that there's quite a lot of these. And I think because of that, you recommend a film, but you don't also recommend what cut of the film that you've watched. And I think the thing is many people probably are attached more to the original cut than they are the other cuts, or that people don't really specify, is that the right word? Um, specify what cut they watched. And I think I need to probably watch like the rest of them, I think, watch them all, because I do think this film, it, it must be good for how many hype it has. And I'm not saying it's a damn right awful film. Some of the shots in this were beautiful. They were so mwah, and just like the coloration to this film it was aesthetically pleasing to me but film terminology there for you guys but <laughs> I just I it hasn't aged it's not like horrible like the Star Wars prequels where they look like a CGI cringe fest and it's just horrid watching it it's not like that but it has aged a lot so it's probably lacking in the area because it's such an older film that some shots do look a little bit more rough around the edges. However, watching it, I didn't see... It's a bit like 2001 Space Odyssey. You know it's old. You know there's some bits that are a little bit rough around the edges. However, the, for the most part of it, it still looks quite good and like in date and you quite like the shots in it. So I do think... It really depends on what it is, what cut it is, but it's not a film that I'm going to rush back to, but it's a film that maybe I'll watch if I'm bored and I don't have anything else to watch. So the next film that I watched in February, I watched twice, I watched it twice. This is how much I love this film and I'm surprised because it's a Marvel film and me, I don't like Marvel films, but it is. Black Panther. Yes, the film directed by Ryan Coogler, 
the film that has been breaking world records everywhere box office hit this week well this week this whole month honestly it's mwah, it's beautiful it stars michael b jordan my new obsession sorry sebastian stan you're still up there but anyway it also stars chadwick boseman who plays the black panther andy circus and daniel kalua i think that's how you say his name i'm so sorry if i butchered that name i'm terribly sorry Anyway, the reason why I watched Black Panther was because I haven't really given Marvel a chance in the past. Basically, the only Marvel films I've watched are Thor, Amazing Spider-Man, and Amazing Spider-Man 2. And from that list, you can understand why I probably don't watch Marvel films much anymore. But this restored my, like, faith in Marvel films and Marvel characters because it is amazing. I loved this film. No wonder it has broken as many world records and box office records as it has because it's just, it's a very compelling film. Now with every film that is going to be things that I don't like and I didn't really like the cutscene with like the action, the cutscenes, the action scenes because it cut and jumped and staggered a bit too much that I got lost. I got lost in the action a little bit. Sometimes I had to take myself out and get, okay, so we're here fighting this person and this, this, this is happening. Okay, I understand, let's go back into the film. But in some scenes it did work, like in the casino scene when she gets a spear out, that bit it worked quite well with it and it wasn't so jump cutty. But I just really love how we're starting to get a little bit more of diverse films now we're getting the cocos the wonder woman wonder woman yeah wonder woman <laughs> and the black panthers and i think it's starting to show that i'm sorry these people can make good films and be compelling actors they don't have to be put alongside a captain america and iron man they can stand alone we can and we want to learn about different cultures and different ethnicities and stuff like that and I think these films especially Black Panther are showing that these can be successful films and we don't need sort of like the back brace of like other superheroes they can stand alone and honestly as I said before I watched this film twice I watched it on the Monday and I watched it on the Wednesday and it's not as good as a first viewing because nothing really can compare to a first viewing of a film that you love so much but it's like it's up there it's like just on the cuff of how good it was but also i will quickly say and this is the bit on the second viewing that i was going guys stay st stay around the credits now, i don't know marvel films but i know that every single film has a cameo at the end all right so i was watching the first time and i was like I'll watch the cameo. If I'm here for the Marvel experience, I'm going to see it through to the end. That's what I did. And also, I was generously paid off. If you know who's in the cameo, you will know that I was very, very happy. But no, they have a cameo. And it is of Bucky Barnes. I think that's his name, the Winter Soldier. And who plays him but Sebastian Stan. Watch it and stay till the end because you get to see my, my babe. My babe, Sebastian Stan. Mwah. Now, the next film that I watched was an Oscar film. Now, I am following the Oscars quite a lot. I've watched Three Billboards Outside Ebbing. I've watched I, Tonya. I've watched... Actually, I haven't watched any films yet because none of the films ever really come out in the UK before the Oscars. Like, one of them, one of them that I did watch was The Shape of Water. Gilmore, uh, directed by Gilmore Del Toro. And it stars Sally Hawkins, who is mute. Richard Jenkins, who I was surprised it was. I was sitting there, I was like, I know you from something. And then it just kind of clicked. I was like, oh my god, it's you! Um, Michael Shannon and Octavia Spencer. But I was just going to the cinema. And my friend wanted to watch it because he was like, it has fish sex in it. I'm like, oh my god. It's probably more than just fish, fish sex in it. So I was like, no, we're going to watch it. 
I'm going to show you. But yeah, it, 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 it has a lot of elements in it. But it's not solely about fish sex. It's beautiful. The cinematography combined with the score, it was just... Mwah, it gave that impression of a mystical fairy tale. The all-round aesthetically pleasing fairy tale. It was just so beautiful. Not a film that you watch with your parents though, however, because there are some bits that are a bit awkward. But apart from that, I love this film. I can understand why it's going to win Best Picture. However, I do think Dunkirk should because Dunkirk was my favourite. But taking my bias, Christopher Nolan love out of this, this was a cinematic masterpiece. If you have not watched it yet, please go watch it. It's not all about fish sex. As much as people go, ah, it's really not. It has elements of it. Like, they did do it. They totally did. But the story is so compelling. And I've got so many theories about this. I may watch it again and tell you all of the theories I have because there are so many. I've made like so many like theories about what film I <laughs> about what this film is. Honestly, the the little Easter eggs as well to the classical films. Like this is why I think I loved La La Land so much because I want to get into like the the Marilyn Monroe's and that kind of like genre. And I think this kind of like paid homage a little bit to some of them they had like the little dancing music and although it wasn't set in the present it was set a little bit like over like somewhere I think probably maybe the 70s 80s I really should have looked that up I haven't but it pays beautiful homage to those kind of things and I just thought it was beautiful and I will go and watch it I just I'd probably watch it again and tell you all of the theories because I walked out of the cinema I was just like like oh my god, Joe. And he was like, what? And I was like, I have so many theories about this and I just want to explain it to some of you. And you'll probably all say that I'm dumb and that the film is definitely not how I read it. However, this is how I took it. Maybe I didn't take the preferred reading. Maybe I negotiated it. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'll stop. So guys, I hope you enjoyed my February's what you're watching film video skype call thing i can't word today but anyway i hope you enjoyed if you do go to watch any of these films please let me know what you think i love to have conversations with you guys and i love it when we have opposing sort of differences there was this conversation i was having with this guy about sam rockwell's character in um three bubbles outside the ebbing and i loved having different conversations with you guys and having an opposing conversations because it makes me think about different films and see different viewpoints and i just really enjoyed it so anyway guys i will see you soon for another what you're watching or maybe a review i don't know i might be going to watch ladybird soon so i might make a review on it or just keep it for what you're watching but anyway guys i will see you soon bye